Hello friends, Mark Johnson here. Welcome back to my introductory series on Tririga development. This particular episode is going to be all about modules. You might think it's going to be a very short topic and there's absolutely nothing for you to learn here because you've been doing this a long time. Well, stick around and watch. Uh, you may be surprised. There are actually a couple of things that I had to go digging to, to, to find out because at first glance, I didn't know what they did either. So let's get started. First thing you need to do, log into Tririga. I'm logging in as the system user since this is a brand new instance. That's the only user that is in this particular instance. If I was going to be doing development, I would normally only use the system user to log in and then create my user, which I would then do all my development underneath that user. And the system user isn't a user account that you should use on a regular basis. So now that I'm logged in on my landing page, I'm going to go ahead and go to the tools portal, click on tools, and we need to go into the data modeler. This is the data modeler is where we have all the information for uh, modules and business objects. So the object browser uh, is where we need to go, which it's, it's collapsed by default. So remember, you have to move your mouse over, hover over the little bar, it pops open. And then we can look and see we've got all these different folders here, right? And these folders are modules within Tririga. So Tririga ships with a lot of modules already there. And if we go ahead and if we open up or click on the folder icon, it'll list the, the files that are inside that folder, right? All these files, papers, uh, are the business objects. So to get to the actual module properties, we have to click on the name of the module. So I'm going to come down here to the system module because this is not a hierarchy module and it's got a little bit less properties and I want to discuss it first. So for the module properties, the first thing we have is the module name. Right? And so if I'm going to create a new module, which I will do here shortly, I'm going to follow naming conventions in the creation of that module. So we create modules to kind of group or logically organize our business objects together. So if we have a few different business objects that maybe uh, can be kind of used interchangeably in our process, right, it would make sense for them to be in the same module. Or, you know, if they're related to, together or you're going to have a bunch of business objects that have a lot of the same fields on them, right? Well, you'd want to have those in the same module so that you can take advantage of the base BO and inheriting from the base BO because that will save you a lot of time, right? And we'll cover that when we get to, to business objects um, and we'll talk about the base BO. Hierarchy module. The system module is not a hierarchy module. So uh, if you're going to have a hierarchy module, you would check boxes this and set it this to true, right? And what that means is that the records that you create in this module, there's going to be one root node record, and then all the other records that get created in that module are going to be down underneath that root node in the, in the hierarchy. So if we were to select this hierarchy module checkbox, it would actually add two additional properties, and we'll discuss those in just a minute. But these particular properties that we see here on the screen are, are common amongst all modules, whether they are hierarchy or not. And so then the modify date, so the last date that this module was modified, uh, who modified the module, the revision number for this module, and then the uh, object label. So we can see for the system module here, right, it was last modified on uh, June 8th, 2022, by the system user, it's on the, the first revision still, and the object label is is uh, 1050. So this can be a little bit of confusing because you know 1050 is much older than June uh, 2022, but these properties are the same and haven't really changed. So the object label here is showing us that it's still out of the box, right? It's got an IBM object label, it hasn't been modified. So let's go look at a hierarchy module now, which I'm going to go back to location. So you can see, right, our hierarchy module, our hierarchy module checkbox is true or it's selected, 
right? And then that gives us the show quantity checkbox and the synchronous hierarchy path update checkbox. Now, when I first looked at these, I didn't know what either of these two fields did, to, to be honest with you, even though I've been doing Tririga development for about 13 years now. So I went to, to go and research and, and, and look these up. And in the current version of the documentation, which is the 11.1.4.1 documentation, uh, all it says for the show quantity checkbox is to do not check it, right? Leave, leave, leave it blank. Right? So I went back searching through uh, old versions of the documentation, went all the way back to the the uh, 3.0 platform application builder guide. And in that application builder guide, right, it says that the show quantity checkbox exists to support a feature that is not available at the time of this writing. It is recommended that you leave this checkbox unchecked, even though you may see it checked in some modules. So this was placed here for some future feature that I guess has never made it into the roadmap. So you're not going to use it. So when we go create a new module here in just a minute, we will leave it blank, which will be the, the default setting for that particular field. The synchronous hierarchy path update. This one, um, as you can see, hovering over it, right? You can tell it, it, it tells you what it, it, it does, right? where the show quantity doesn't, but here, this is actually good. You know, you can have a little bit of information because this particular property is not even mentioned in the 11.1.4.1 documentation. Matter of fact, I had to go all the way back to the 10.5.2 release notes to find anything on this particular setting. So this particular property was added in the 3.5.2 platform. And so, quite simply, what it means is that if you have this checked, which is the default setting, then the platform will automatically update the hierarchy path of children records whenever the hierarchy path of the parent record has been changed and that record is saved. Right? If you uncheck it, then the platform will not automatically update those child records. Right. It is um, it is intended then that, you know, an application developer would configure a workflow to handle the update of the hierarchy paths for those children records. Right. So, you know, the advantage here could be that, you know, it gives the, you know, the developer much more control of the update scenarios involving large amounts of hierarchical data. Right. Because if I don't know if you've ever, you know, updated like the the organization root node in an active system that has a lot of organizations, right? It, you know, it creates a, a, a lot of, uh, of work, right? So having that flexibility to be able to handle the updating um, order and process uh, via workflow uh, could be quite useful. So that's what those two additional checkboxes do for us. So let's go ahead and create ourselves a module and we'll just go through the, the process real quick. So in order to create a module, I need to come up here under my my uh, data modeler uh, bar and click new and then new module. So here it is. Uh, you can see it says create module, right? We've got a blank field here for our module name. So again, we want to follow naming convention. So because this is not a shipping module, I'm going to prefix it CST for custom. And then let's just say sports. So let's pretend we're going to create a module and we're going to have some different BOs about, I don't know, sports, tracking, keeping track of sports games or, or something um, along that, that line. So uh, if I click the hierarchy module, in this case, I'm not going to create a hierarchy module, but let's just select it again. I see the show quantity appears in the synchronous hierarchy path update checkbox appears, right? And so by default, the show quantity is unchecked and the recommendation or the instructions are it is to leave this unchecked, right? 
So even though the location module had it checked, right, it's for a feature that is not available, or and uh, I wonder if it if it ever will be. So I'll, I'll see if I can find out anything more. Maybe uh, some of my contacts out there have some some information on that. Uh, I'm curious as to what it was going to be or, or do. And then the synchronous hierarchy path update is selected by default, which again means the platform is going to handle it. So I'm going to uncheck hierarchy module because I do not want to create a hierarchy module. And you can see, right, I can't put anything in any of these other properties. So it's really just those two properties when you're going to create a module that, that you can do, right? Give it a name and then, and then determine if it's a hierarchy module. And then if it's a hierarchy module, then there's two more properties up here, but only really one of them that you should use and that you can you know uncheck uh, if you want to use you know workflow to manually control the updating of the the hierarchy paths so we've got everything in let's go ahead and click save module our module's been saved the system then goes ahead and fills in the, uh, the other properties for us All right now we've got a modified date the modified by the revision number and the object label shows as in progress right so I could tell by looking at this module, right, two things. One, that it's custom, right, because the CST prefix. And then two, it's also um, uh, not out of the box based off of the object label, right? We do not have an IBM object label. So it's in progress. So at some point, I would want to give this an actual appropriate uh, object label based off of uh, what I'm doing. So if we come back over here to the object browser now, and if we look, we scroll down, and there, here's the CST Sports module. So remember, you know, the, the ordering, right? These, the capital letters come before lowercase letters. So that's why these modules all showed up first, right? And these modules, you know, also they don't have a try prefix, right? Because these are like the, some of the original modules in Tririga. It was before they even created a naming convention. And then we have, uh, you know, all the rest of, of the try ones. So that's all there is to modules. If you want to delete this module, uh, you can if you've created one. If there's no business objects in it, you can just go ahead and click delete module. If you have business objects inside the module, you have to delete the business objects first. Right. So if you've got a module or something that's been around for a while and, and, and you're trying to clean up, right, there, there is an order in which you have to delete things, right? So you can't delete the module because there's business objects. Well, you can't delete the business objects because there's forms. You can't delete the forms because there's records that are using the form, right? So you've got to go through this whole process of deleting things in order and removing them in order, and then you could eventually uh, remove the module. So... I uh, hope you've learned something new, and I hope you like this video. Uh, please like and subscribe to the channel, and uh, stay tuned for more videos. The next video will be on business objects. Thank you.